welcome to this tutorial about Crossref's web deposit form. I'll be using a test account to show you how to register content using this tool. What types of content can I register using the web deposit form? You can use it to register a variety of content types. You'll need your Crossref username and password. Your login details were sent to you when your Crossref membership was confirmed. In today's example, I'll be registering journal content. We start by entering metadata about the journal that your article belongs to. It's a good idea to copy and paste your metadata in plain text to avoid introducing any special characters or coding that could interfere with your metadata later on. So we have the journal title, the journal abbreviation, if there is one, the journal URL, if your journal has volumes and issues, complete the fields with this information, and you must complete at least the year of publication under publication dates. It's best to include the complete publication date, whether for print, online or both. Add your dates as numerical values such as 2020, 05, 07. Next, click Add Articles. Ah, I've got an error message. This is because I haven't provided a journal DOI or an ISSN. Your deposit can't proceed without this information. So you must include either a print ISSN an electronic ISSN or a journal DOI. It's important to add your ISSN, but if you don't yet have an ISSN, you can register a journal DOI instead and add your ISSN later. In this case, I'm going to provide the journal DOI. On the next screen at the top, you start to see the XML file that's being created in the background using the information you provided on the first step. We now continue to add metadata, this time for the article. The more metadata you add, the more useful the record you create, and the more likely it is to be discovered through the many services and tools that use Crossref metadata. As before, I continue to add my metadata in plain text. There's a field for original title if your work is a translation. And under contributor, we add the details of the author, editor or other contributor. I can choose the role from the drop down menu here. I add the given name, the family name, And if possible, do include the ORCID ID for each contributor. I click Add, and I can continue to add contributors if applicable. Next, I add the article date. The article DOI and the resource URL for the content. If my resource has page numbers, I add them here and I click finish to continue. Enter your Crossref username and password and an email address. Your deposit results will be sent to this email address, so do be sure to check that it's correct. And then click Deposit. If your deposit has been successfully submitted to our system, you'll see this success message. However, it still needs to be processed before your deposit is complete. Check your email inbox. After your successful submission, 
you will receive two emails to the email address you gave in step four. Here are the two emails you receive. The first, Crossref Web Deposit XML, is a copy of the XML file that was created by the Web Deposit form, which can be helpful if you're eager to learn more about XML. This file has a unique identifier beginning with CR. It's a good idea to include this identifier if you need to contact support about your submission. The second email will return the status of your submission, including your deposit ID. Each submission is given this unique identifier so you can retrieve it and confirm the details of your submission. This email tells you whether your deposit has been successful and flags any errors that need to be corrected. Let's look in the admin tool to see what the result of your submission looks like. Start by logging into the admin tool with your Crossref username and password. Go to the Submissions tab and click on the Administration tab. Remember the submission ID that you received by email it goes in the first field here. Click on the submission ID. And click to view the XML that you created with your deposit. You can update the metadata associated with the DOI after you have first registered it. So there may be lots of different submissions for each DOI as you've added, changed or removed metadata. To view the history of these changes, go to the Reports tab. Enter the DOI you deposited, and you'll be able to see the history report for all deposits and updates relating to that DOI. Now that the DOI has been registered, what can we and everyone else do with it? The DOI can be resolved, it can be viewed in our APIs, including the REST API, and it can be found in Crossref Metadata Search. Once you've received your email confirming that your registration was successful, your DOI can be resolved. This means that when we enter the DOI as a URL in the browser, we can click on it, and it will take us to the resource URL that we deposited as part of its metadata. Within a few hours of being processed, your DOI can be viewed in our REST API. Here it is with the metadata that we deposited, and we can also find it in Crossref Metadata Search. You can update an existing deposit using the web deposit form in two ways. If you have just a few records to update, simply re-register your content, including the changes. If you want to add license and funding information or similarity check URLs to your DOIs in bulk, use the Web Deposit Form's Supplemental Metadata Upload option. In our documentation, you'll find more information about updating your metadata and specifically about the CSV files that you can upload and how to format them. Let's have a look at an example. Here's the example file I've downloaded. It sets out the information in columns and all you need to do is remove the example information and complete your own DOI, funder name, funder identifier and so on to prepare your file for re-upload. In my example, I've added my DOIs in column A, followed by funder name, funder identifier, license information, and the start date for each license. Be sure not to leave any empty columns and take care to save your file in CSV format. Your CSV file needs to conform to particular specifications. Please see our documentation for full details. To submit your CSV file, select the Supplemental Metadata Upload option under Data Type and click Browse 
to choose your file. Enter your Crossref username, password and your email address. Finally, click Upload CSV data. My deposit has been submitted to the system and I will soon receive an email with the log results. And here's the email I've received with the results of my deposit. Another way I can add metadata to my existing record is by using the simple text query form to deposit references. To use the simple text query form, I paste my references in plain text, one per line. I then click Submit. And the Crossref system checks all the metadata that we have to find the DOI that matches for each record. If I want to deposit, I click on deposit and I enter my email address, Crossref username and password and the parent DOI of the record I wish to deposit these references for. I enter these details and click deposit. And I see the confirmation message that my reference deposit file was accepted. And I then just need to look out for two emails from the system, one with my deposit file and the second with the system results log.